Hello. I'm really excited about this video today. I do all kinds of TBR videos on my channel. In the series I plan to read monthly TBRs, my physical TBR owned shelf, all kinds of things. But I've never talked about my TBR shelf on Kindle because your girl has a problem as of late. I never used to buy Kindle books until I was absolutely ready to sit down and read the book. But a couple things have changed that recently, okay? So my lovely friends in Patreon, we have a whole tab dedicated just to um, letting each other know when there are Kindle deals on books and we all buy them and it's a great lovely time. We are a support group of friends who like to buy books. So when there's been some steals on books, so I'm talking like $3 or less, then, you know, I snatch them up. Then also, um, with me becoming more aware of self-published books that I wanted to read recently, I have purchased quite a few because uh, they have been relatively inexpensive. I, of course, plan to support the author and purchase the physical book after I read it. But you guys know I read my books on my Kindle before I buy them. That's how we've ended up here with 23 things that I'm going to talk about today. I didn't purchase all of these. Some are included in the Amazon Prime reading, which I have downloaded and it's taken a lot of time. Like some of these I have purchased quite a while ago. So it's not like I bought all of these recently, but still no guilt, no shame. We do not shame anyone's TBR shelf. I just think it's a little bit funny and ironic because I pride myself so much on library use and not purchasing books before I read them and yet I have 23 things on my Kindle TBR. Here the truth comes out, right? So first I will talk about some that I plan to read relatively soon and for the sake of time I'm not going to talk about the synopsis for these books because we would be here till tomorrow if I gave you a synopsis for 23 books. The first book I have is Dreams of the Dying by Nicholas Lietzow and this is I think a self-published book that my Patreon group is reading in the month of June in case you want to join along with us but this is supposed to be a darker fantasy story with horror elements and that's what's gripped me. The cover is stunning. I absolutely can't wait to get to this but it was the combination of this really unique synopsis and the cover that intrigued me. So I definitely recommend looking into this one a bit. If those elements sound interesting to you at all, put this on your radar. Next we have Winds of Strife by UG Gutman. This is a self-published book that we are reading as a group in July, I believe. And I'm really excited to get to this one because I think it sounds a little bit like we have a tale of at some point females fighting back and there's witches involved. So that's enough for me. I am really excited to get to this one. So this is on my TBR shelf as well. I also have purchased Songs of Insurrection by JC Kang. I was corrected when I talked about this in my self-published books video that this, the author has said that this is adult fantasy. And I know it involves either like singing or music of some type, which really intrigues me. Phenomenal cover. I couldn't pass it up. It sounded really unique and beautiful. I guess those two things will get me every time. Next is just one that I already own the physical copy of because I like to have a combination of both sometimes. And this is one that I sort of want to just read a story at a time. This is Women Who Run With the Wolves, Myths and Stories of the Wild Woman Archetype by Clarissa Pinkola Estes. This is a collection of stories I think that sort of analyzes different mythology about women throughout history and I think we'll have a lot of beautiful things to say about it. So I don't think I will ever just like sit down and read this all in one section. It'll just be sort of over several months at a time probably. This next one I downloaded based on a recommendation from one of you guys on my self-published list and that is Xeroth Law by Gyrik Hatche, which is Digitesk book number one. I will read you this. Autonomous machines polish the bones of a civilization slowly being swallowed by wilderness. Creatures not born of earth inhabit the remote corners of the world. Humans live with legacies they don't understand. Old ruins, strange technological artifacts, incredible powers in their blood. There are other worlds alongside this one and death is not what it once was. So that's all I'm going to say about this like sci-fi fantasy, but I really like the cover and somebody was just raving about this one. So I downloaded it to add to my collection. Next is one I really want to prioritize. That is The Ember Blade by Chris Wooding. I know there's been a bit more buzz about this recently. So when my friend Murphy, who I'm sure you guys all know, she was telling me about it as she was reading it and 
and how much she loved it. And just the way that she described it from before she was even finished, I was like, I need to buy this book. So I bought it right away based on her recommendation. And it's one that I'm very excited to get to. A Land Under Occupation, A Legendary Sword, A Young Man's Journey to Find His Destiny. So I don't know if we're gonna find like a, a chosen one trope here or what, but I swear I heard it's like a more modern type of book to read if you love The Lord of the Rings, which like, Obviously your girl does, so I'm excited to read this. Next, I have downloaded The Knife's Edge by Matthew Wolf, which this is the first book in a fantasy series. And this one hooked me because, well, first of all, I loved the covers for them, which I'm pretty sure I found out about this through Patrick as well. It says, when legends come to life, the world trembles from a single name, Ronin. Once heroes from a different age, they wield elemental powers, wind, water, fire, stone, forest, sun, moon, flesh, and metal. At the same time, a young man discovers his best friend with a sword in her stomach and dark wings sprouting from her back so like all of that sounds awesome because I love elemental magic but also she's getting wings like what's going on here sounded interesting to me. Now, one that I've picked up very recently because of a Kindle deal is The Bone Chart Daughter by Andrea Stewart. A lot of us in Patreon, I think, picked this up as well. And my friend Angela from Literature Science Alliance was talking about it being an enjoyable read that I probably would like. And I'm always looking for things dealing with bone magic and maybe something a little bit more on the edgier or creepier side that has almost horror-like aspects. I don't think this one's horror at all, but just when I think of like bone magic, it gives me a creepier vibe. So that's it's kind of what I was going for. And I plan to read this like in the middle of other dense fantasy. Then we have one I saw on Holly's channel from Holly Hart's books. That is The Ranger of Marzana by John Scovrun. I don't know anything about this. I'm not even gonna read the synopsis and try to pretend that I do. I simply know it's an adult fantasy that has horror aspects from my understanding and it's got a bomb cover and we can all appreciate that. So that was enough for me to click purchase when it was $2. I could not pass it up. And I really need to own the physical copy of this book like yesterday. On my self-published video, I got a ton of recommendations for this one. And that is Rise of Gods, Paternus Number no. 1 by Dirk Ashton. It says, American Gods meets the Avengers and Supernatural meets the Lord of the Rings. Paternus combines myths from around the world in a modern story of action and intrigue that is urban fantasy on the surface, but so much more at its core. Here's the thing that intrigued me. I generally don't like urban fantasy, but everybody suggested this one and I've heard really good things. And it has over a four star average rating on Goodreads. So I thought I would give this one a try to see if there is some type of urban fantasy that I do enjoy. Then we have the Atlas Six, which I cannot remember who recommended this? It might have been Olivia from Olivia Reads a Latte. This is by Olivia Blake. It's about this society of caretakers of lost knowledge from the greatest civilizations of antiquity, a secret society of magical academia. So I don't really know more than that. It's supposed to be an adult fantasy of like a magical school secret society type and, and the deal was sealed. Sign me up for that. Magical school setting is one of my favorite things ever. And if it's like dark academia, I am there for it. Hello, Secret History is one of my favorite books of all time. Oh, one I've owned for forever that I really have been meaning to get to is Ashes of the Sun by Django Wexler. So I really don't know anything about the plot of this. Stunning cover and I've heard good things. I've been wanting to read it for some time now. I've been wanting to read a lot by this author for some time. So I need to prioritize this soon, clearly. I guess we're getting into the section of books that I've owned for a while. So another one that I purchased a long time ago is Along the Razor's Edge by Rob J. Hayes. I'll spare you guys because I talk about this all the time. It's been so on so many lists and TBRs. I'm getting to it this year, friends. Don't you worry. I'm not getting to this whole list this year. There's no way, but I'm getting to this one this year. I'm at least giving it a try. We also have We Are the Dead by Mike Shackle, which I talk about all the time as well. So I have to get to this one in 2021 as well, because these are the section of books now that I have owned for at least a year. Similar to We Ride the Storm by Devin Madsen. So really don't know much about all of these. They're just adult fantasies that sounded interesting at some point or another. So I've added them to my collection. Solace Lost, I think came by recommendation from Holly's channel, or at least that's where I found out about it as well. Well, there was a Kindle deal, so I picked it up. So this had an interesting cover that felt very different from any adult fantasy stories that I was seeing, and it just sounded interesting at this point. I don't remember anything about the synopsis, but I remember liking what I heard. So we'll get to it at some point, and I believe this is part of a trilogy. 
maybe if I'm not mistaken. Next we have some fantasy romance and this is The Hunter and the Mage which is a sequel to The Raven and the Dove that I was raving about for quite some time now which is the self-published book that I picked up by Caitlin Davis. This involves like avian species like ravens and doves obviously but it has really cool world building aspects as well as like a competition to choose your mate. <laughs> <laughs> and it's it's a romance that I really enjoy, this young adult fantasy story. Then we have Air Awakens by Elise Kova. I have tried from this author in the past and not been head over heels in love with it, but these covers, man, these covers do it for me, and I'm determined to at least give them a try, so I bought the, the Kindle book of it. It says a library apprentice, a sorcerer prince, and an unbreakable magical bond. So I think it's gonna be a young adult fantasy romance, that when I'm in just the right mood for, will hopefully work out. Then we have From Blood and Ash by Jennifer L. Armentrout. I have really loved Jennifer L. Armentrout's books in the past, and I'm saving this for when I'm in the mood for some fantasy romance, which happens like maybe once or twice a year. And well, A Court of Silver Flames has checked that box for quite some time now, more romance than I ever asked for. But when I'm feeling like reading that again, I will pick this one up because it does have great reviews. It sounds interesting. And I do think if I wait to pick it up until the right time, I will enjoy it. And that's the case with a lot of these Kindle books that I own digital copies of. It just is something I'm saving for the right moment to where when I'm feeling like I wanna pick something up, it's there and I have access to it. And I think that's helpful. We then have Howl's Moving Castle by Diana Wynne Jones. I love the Studio Ghibli film so, so much. It's just something that is so precious to me. So I have to read the books. I have to find out the inspiration and see what differences there are. And then of course, rewatch the movie again and again. So this is on my list to get to at some point. And the last one is one that I've picked up most recently, and that is Wild Seed by Octavia Butler, which is the first book in the Pattern Master duology. I don't know anything about this synopsis, but I just have wanted to read more from Octavia Butler since I've read something by her in the past and I really, really enjoyed it. So I feel like she just has so many great books to go back to. So this is like a sci-fi fantasy, by a female author, and I'm very much looking forward to picking this up when I get the chance. And last but not least, we have two graphic novels. The first one is Star Wars Darth Vader Volume 2. I enjoyed the first one, it was a little bit just middle of the road for me, but I'm excited to continue on still because Vader, obviously. I always want more Darth Vader content. And the second one is Star Wars Darth Maul, which I have never read before, and I'm actually really looking forward to diving into this one to get more of this story since I have haven't read anything like this and I'm excited to I don't know why I always say I'm excited and I never prioritize the things does any other reader feel this way let's just all raise our hands guilty as charged <laughs> oh, wow that was a lot so there are 23 things I think if I counted correctly that I own on Kindle that I really want to get to at some point, who knows when, but there's a little bit of everything here. There's some fantasy, there's some sci-fi, there's some graphic novels, some romance, some young adults, some adults, some self-published, some traditionally published. There's a lot on this list. There's some nonfiction, something for every mood just about. What books do you guys own on Kindle? I would love to hear. And also talk to me about these books. If you guys have read these books, let me know what I should be prioritizing, what I need to read first. And I just wanna hear your guys' thoughts about them. So. Thank you guys for watching and I will see you next time.